it's a beautiful morning out here at this undisclosed location beautiful property and uh, we've been spending the last few days doing some uh, Egyptian goose and dove and sparrow pest control um, in the dairy which is just across the road here we've managed to shoot a whole bunch of geese we've got some doves down some sparrows we're expecting to shoot a lot of pigeons unfortunately they just never came in um, and we may still head that side and do some more shooting there this, this afternoon but the sun has come out after two days of, of rain and uh, that means that we're probably gonna have some ground squirrels poking their heads up and uh, ground squirrels on this on this farm can be a problem they um, well they cause the cows to break their legs the cows legs could fall down the holes they try to get themselves out the legs break and the farmers just told me this morning that to put 10 heifers down who'd broken their legs just this year so it's actually quite a big problem and we're very happy to, to sort it out with the good old impact um, I've wanted to give some other guns some some airtime the Wildcat the Dreamline um, we've also got the Huben K1 here we're just waiting for an opportunity to use it but um, this is the right gun for ground squirrel hunting um, you know you don't have much time to take the shot the animals can be fairly fairly far away and, and moving away or towards you and you need a flat shooting setup and this is that that gun for me and as far as I'm concerned I don't think any of the other guns I have with me come close to it it's not the best for carrying around unfortunately it's a bit heavy and that's where maybe the wildcat would have been better but I'm willing to risk the extra weight and or bear the extra weight if it means that I'm going to be able to take um, my shots with a little bit more confidence so super happy about that awesome setup and uh, I think let's just take a walk around here and um, maybe drive to a few different spots and see if we can get a few ground squirrels down let's do it in the previous video we used the lighter FX hybrid slugs but this time we're going heavier with the 34 grain Patriot javelin slugs you'll notice that the meat plat of the javelins is pretty much the exact width to slot into this little slot in the FX magazine and you'll also notice the length of a 34 grain javelin it's pretty much flush with this magazine before you put the cap on so we did design these with the fx uh, magazines in mind um, doesn't mean they won't shoot out of other guns it just means that they are kind of very much catered to fx guns and fx magazines but they work really well and i've even got a extra magazine here which i can put on my belt in case i need to do a quick change we have great weather this morning as we head out and the plan is to move away from the dairy towards the dry areas where we know some squirrel colonies are active. There's a particular colony that we try to find early on that lives close to the farmhouse but we have no luck and so we move on towards a different spot and Jethro the farmer points us in the right direction. Apparently these squirrels are quite wary of people so we strategize a bit of a stalk to figure out how to get within range. The wind isn't too bad but it's starting to pick up so we're hoping that they will still show themselves and eventually we get our first opportunity of the day. That's a ground squirrel down from about 50 meters. Uh, the wind suddenly started to pick up like crazy which is really weird. It's been a beautiful day up until now. But uh, let's go check him out. Perfect headshot. Um, didn't have to dial anything, and that's the beauty of, of of the impact with the Dreamline Wildcat. We'd have to even shooting those hybrid slugs. I'd have to dial for a 50 meter shot with this gun. Dead on. Well, ground squirrel down. Uh, this is a male. Looks like I got him right below the eye here, and the, the 34 grand javelin slug did some damage on the on the other end. Um, so very happy with that. This ground squirrel is covered in scars, so he must have been in a, a fight with another male or something. Impact has once again done the job. Absolutely love this gun. Uh, 34 grand slug at a thousand feet per second. There's nothing else in my lineup that can really do that with this kind of accuracy. So super happy. Let's move on. We make our way back towards the farmhouse and as we come close we notice that the squirrels that we were after earlier in the day have now reappeared and I load up for a shot. Wow, that was crazy. We were just uh, driving back into the farm area here by the farmhouse 
Now we know there's a few colonies of ground squirrels close by here. They actually come and they steal the feed from the from the sheds. So we, we drove in slowly and saw a bunch of them out and we thought, okay, if we get out the vehicle now, they're probably going to get a fright and run away. So I just put a sandbag on the windowsill and set up and, and hold that on and got a few down. So really happy with that. Um, yeah, would have been a little, little bit of a bummer to only have one ground school down for the day. But to have three or four down makes me feel much better. Looking down at a squirrel colony from the air, you can clearly see how much damage is caused by their digging. Thankfully, this damage is also a dead giveaway as to where we should sit and wait for them. So Nicole and I park off about 60 to 70 meters away from the colony and wait. Another one down, 60, 60 to 65 meters. So again, once again, no holdover required. No dialing required, just get on. The first shot actually traveled way left, but the large hollow point does its job thankfully, and I was able to correct for the next one. Pretty hard to see with the Mirage, but we got him. Now knowing ground squirrels, they will come out again, so. Just wait. I didn't know the exact distance to this one. You often don't have time to range, but as long as he's under 65 meters, I know that I can hold dead on and the slug won't drop. That was a very close shot, like 25 meters. <laughs> so very straightforward in the head, super happy with that. We park off at yet another spot where we can see the ground dug up and we wait with a bar pod and a sandbag. This guy shows up and starts bolting and once again, the benefits of a flat trajectory come to the fore. You can see the mirage boiling from right to left and completely blurring the image here and all the while I'm parallaxing with my left hand as he's running away to try to keep him in focus. I know he's around 70 to 80 meters away but I'm pretty confident that if the slug does drop below the head I'll still get a vital shot and that's exactly what happens. If I was shooting pellets I'd have to hold three moles for the drop that's up here and would probably have to hold between one and two mils for the wind. That, my friends, is why I like heavy slugs. We keep our eyes peeled and we spot a few meerkats and mongoose, but eventually we are able to get our last few ground squirrels for the day and look at how fast the mirage is moving now. Two great headshots to finish things off. I'd call that a pretty successful pest control outing and I can tell you the farmer was happy to hear it. Nicole and I enjoy one last sunset in this wild and colourful part of the country and it's in moments like this, reflecting on how privileged I am to be able to do this for a living, that I'm truly grateful. Many people spend their days cooped up in an office and I have those days too. Editing and admin can keep me stuck behind a screen for weeks, but these outings make it all worth it. As always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please show YouTube by hitting that like button and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Keep well, guys.